beautiful setting of Lake of the Woods could uh, potentially kill you, but yeah. it can. That area in northwestern Ontario, along with uh, southeastern Manitoba, is a favorite home of a deadly infectious bacteria. Blastomycosis infects people who simply breathe it in. Yeah, that's right. Blasto thrives in the right combination of moisture and acid in that soil, and it affects about 1 in 100,000 people. Particularly those, though, whose immune system is so low or weakened that they just can't fight off the fungus particles or spores. It's truly a danger you can't see. And our story today deals with a Winnipeg musician who got it twice. Soup's on at the Hunter House in St. James. While this may be an ordinary, everyday scene for most households, it's one that Sharon and Dean Hunter cherish. For a while, they didn't think it would ever happen again. I need a spoon, Sharon. Before. So I can stir the soup. It all started four years ago. Dean Hunter and his Winnipeg bandmates from Dam Strait play a gig in Sioux Narrows, Ontario. It's due south of Kenora, about a three and a half hour drive from Winnipeg. Summer party country. When the music dies down, Sioux Narrows is also in the heart of Lake of the Woods. Beautiful scenery and serenity. Cottage country for hundreds if not thousands of Manitobans. But lurking just beneath the surface of this picture-perfect postcard is something dark and dangerous. The potentially deadly disease, blastomycosis, lies in the acidic, moist soil of northwestern Ontario. Commonly known as blasto, the fungal bacteria can infect people after it's inhaled. It first struck down one of the guitar players in the band, Bobby Peterson. He got sick just one month after the Sioux Narrows gig. Three months later, lead singer Dean Hunter noticed the signs. My body shut down. I was unable to eat. I couldn't sleep. Uh, I was in constant pain. Blasto is a fungus that grows inside of you and mimics a number of other ailments. It shows up as many things, like pneumonia. Patients often go through a number of false diagnoses and wasted treatment before being properly diagnosed. I went to doctor after doctor after doctor, and uh, each one of them said the same thing, you know. It could be this, it could be that. Four years ago, we did a story about Hunter, who described the growth on the top of his head caused by blasto. It was about this size. Like, my head is here, and this is just like something that just grew over top of it like that. It wasn't until that growth burst and doctors took a sample that the correct diagnosis was made by Dr. John Emble at the Health Sciences Center. It took a while, but Hunter slowly recovered from his bout with blasto. Dr. Emble himself told me, he said, Good news, you're not going to get it. He goes, you'll get it once, but you'll never get it again. Wrong. Blasto hunted down Hunter again. Two years later, almost to the day, as he was getting ready in Winnipeg to go to Kenora to play a gig, he was in the bathtub when his arm went numb. It flopped down. It was, first of all, it had a jerking motion like this. And it just, I was like, you know, I was yelling for Sharon. I heard Dean call me. But it was the way he called me. I knew in his voice something was wrong. I was yelling at her, saying, my, my left arm is dead. It's, it's, it's numb. It's dead. It was just hanging there. Of course, I'm freaking out and shaking. I don't know what to do. You don't think, do I phone 911? What do I do? And anyways, uh, we got his parents on the phone. His parents took Dean to hospital. Somehow, the blasto was back. So was the debilitating pain. It's not a nice thing to say, but sometimes I was even wishing for death because I was in so much pain. I didn't want to believe it. What am I going to do without you? Uh, you got girls. You you know, you can't. Sharon and Dean have two daughters. When the Blasto returned with a vengeance, they were only nine and five. They were good. They were good about it. But I could tell in their face so that they were wondering and they were scared and they don't like seeing him like that again the lineup of expensive drugs again the relentless and constant pain oh there were times i've given up i gave right up but treating blasto uh, is the uh, only hope jump. otherwise it can really kill good. dean underwent brain surgery to remove a growth the size of a grape when i went for surgery it was like like the doctor described like a grapefruit he just opened me up and scooped that thing out Maybe it's just hard to keep a rocker down. 
Dean went back on stage, head often pounding harder than the music. He sang while being fed his medication intravenously, carried in his fanny pack through a tube underneath his shirt. Now he doesn't take any medication. He can freely roam around the kitchen preparing his lunch, simple tasks that were impossible only a short time ago. Being able to get up every day and look at myself in the, in the mirror and say, I'm still here, I'm lucky twice over. <laughs> Lucky and incredibly strong as yeah, well. He is, yeah. So far you've shown us a man who fell ill with a so-called super bug and now someone of course who got infected with blastomycosis twice. Though not everyday sicknesses but we hear about them you know I guess often enough to make us wonder about whether or not we'll get them. Yeah you're not kidding you know I'm probably like a lot of people it's crossed my mind every now and then yeah. but tomorrow you know we'll talk with the Winnipeg infectious disease doctor who treated both of those men and we'll find out from John Embel about the chances of getting these one of these uh, infectious diseases and what we might do to help prevent that possibility. We'll be paying very close attention thank you Brian. You're welcome. We're